Now, when it comes to doing up your kitchen, you could literally spend tens of thousands of dollars. Well, what would you say if I told you you could do up your entire kitchen for less than $600? You heard right, just $600. It's all about getting back to basics, using smart ideas and working with what you've got. This will be our most affordable kitchen makeover ever. Okay, so first things first, as always, everything has to go. So a few boxes should take care of this lot. But you know what? They're actually quite good. Give me an idea for a bit later on. So I'll save those to one side and I'll box up all this food. You know, these cabinet doors are a little on the dark side and they tend to close in this space. Plus, a couple of these drawers I can see have a slight bit of damage. But not to worry, a few minor repairs and a quick coat of paint should bring this place up as good as new. No need to fork out on brand new cabinets. Now, my tip here is when you're removing the doors, make sure that you pop a little bit of tape at the bottom of each. That way you can label them and you'll know where they all belong. So can you paint laminate doors? Well, with a little bit of elbow grease and the right materials, of course you can. All you need to do is make sure that your doors are thoroughly clean. Now, I like to start with sugar soap. That's gonna help the paint to stick. Once that's dry, go over it with sandpaper. Really important, again, to help the paint to stick and then give it a quick wipe over with some methylated spirits. Now, you can start with any primer you like. I like to go for a shellac-based one. It's actually very durable and it dries incredibly fast. With me, speed is always of the essence. Now it's on with the top coat. I've gone simply for basic aqua enamel. It's the same paint that you use for your timber trims and doors throughout the house. It's very durable, again, water-based and dries super fast. Now as for colour, you can have this tinted any shade you like, but for kitchens, as always, white is the most popular colour. And rightly so, it opens up the space, makes things look double the size, makes it feel fresh and new. Believe it or not, these door bases were actually chewed by the family dog, but we can easily take care of it. You can buy lengths of tassie oak from the hardware. We've just cut it to size, and with a bit of glue and some tape, no one will be any the wiser. Now these tie in perfectly with the existing wooden handles, which are actually in pretty good condition. All they need is a very light sand and a quick coat of varnish. It's amazing, just if you look around your kitchen, how much money you can actually save by reusing things you've already got. For the walls, I'm going for exactly the same shade as I used on the cabinet doors. It's one of my favourites, it's called Natural White. If you're putting up with ugly coloured laminate bench tops in your kitchen, well you don't have to because your brand new bench top now comes in a can. High on everyone's wish list in a brand new kitchen would have to be composite stone. Well with this system, you can get the look on the budget. And I know what you're thinking, is it durable? Well, the manufacturers say that once it's cured after seven days, it goes rock hard. And with the right care, there's no reason why you can't treat this like an ordinary laminate bench top. And remember that jumbled mess that came out of these cupboards? Well, all it took was a few storage containers and baskets to take care of everything. It looks so much better. By having the cupboards and the bench tops all the same, it gives us that seamless look and actually can make a small space feel a lot larger. When you're doing up any room, you know it is such a great idea to always try and consider what you can really work with. It would be so easy to throw the baby out with the bath water. You know, I could have just painted over these tiles, but by working with them and adding all of this white, they now really sing. In fact, they're a real gem because these 70s tiles are very on trend. Go to any home accessory store and you're bound to see a whole swag of stuff with very similar prints. One of the biggest problems most people have with their kitchens is lack of storage, and that's certainly the case at this place. But you know, it is really easy enough to make your own. Now, if you head down to your local hardware store, you can find this stuff. It's called Melamine. It comes in standard length and standard width. They can even cut it to length for you. And for two and a half metres, it's roughly $20. I think that's a bit of a bargain. Add a shelf, and you can utilise all of the space within the box. <laughs> Just let me wiggle in here. This is certainly what they call 
S-E-I-T. That is doing it together. It's not a job to do single-handedly. There we go. I think we're in. Look at all that storage. Woohoo! In a cabinet like this is the ideal solution for that void everyone seems to have over the fridge. So I can let go now? Yep. Do I trust you? Yep. <laughs> So by adding our clever box cupboard, we've now got a perfect shelf. So all of the cookbooks are within easy reach while you're working. And bulky things like these colanders that take up so much cupboard space can now go up here. They also add some all important colours. This Venetian blind pretty much takes up the majority of one wall in the kitchen. But to be honest, it's past its use by date. So what I want to do is just make a few modifications to turn it into a beautiful Roman blind. The idea is to use this as the main frame to create the Roman blind. So the first thing to do is actually take some scissors and cut away these little ladder sections. Now, depending on how many folds you want in your blind is how many slats you actually will need. The rest of them can simply be cut away. So the next thing to do is just run a tape measure from top to bottom and just arrange the little slats at equal spacings all the way down. With curtains, normally you need fabric two and a half to three times the width of your window. And that's why I love Roman blinds so much, because you only need one piece of fabric the size of the window itself. I've chosen a very classic stripe. The green will pick out the colour in the tiles and also the white will reflect what's going on in the cabinets. Now I've simply hemmed it all the way around, laying it face down onto the table. Now the blind goes on top. Just run a line of glue all the way along the top, then to each slat working your way down. Not bad, a whole new old blind for just $15, bit of a bargain. Here's a smart idea for something you might already have. Remember that old wooden rolling pin that I salvaged from the cupboard? Well, with a couple of hooks added, it is the perfect place to hang your utensils. Retro tiles, retro light shade, a genuine 1970s find from a second-hand store, only $40. Just shows you if you shop around, what's old is new again. I think it's fair to say that we have achieved what most people would think completely impossible, and that is a transformed kitchen for just $599. My biggest outlay, our stone look bench tops at $200. I might just put that towards my next kitchen makeover.